Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I want to talk to you guys about using hashes in Ruby. Now, a hash is basically a type of data structure where we can store a bunch of different pieces of information. If you're familiar with arrays in Ruby, they're very similar to arrays. So a hash is basically doing the same thing. It's allowing us to store multiple pieces of information. The difference is that with hashes, we can actually store something called a key value pair. And a key value pair is basically where we can store a value and we can give it a key, which is kind of like a name. Now, a lot of times you'll hear hashes also called dictionaries. Um, that's because they act a lot like dictionaries. Uh, picture a dictionary, like in a dictionary, you have two parts to every word, right? You have the actual word itself, but then in addition to the word, you actually have the definition, right? So you could say that the word is the key and the definition is the value. So that's basically what a hash is. And you'll kind of see um, what this is as we kind of go through this tutorial. In this tutorial, I wanna build a little hash which will store uh, state codes. So for example, I live in the United States and we have a bunch of different states and each state has a specific code. So for example, Pennsylvania, PA, right? New York is NY, California is CA, Michigan is MI, right? So you can map a state like New York to a specific abbreviation like NY. We can map California to a specific abbreviation, CA. And that's basically what I want to represent inside of my hash. So we're gonna build a hash which can store all of those different abbreviations. And you'll see why these data structures are useful and how they're different from arrays. So down here, I want to create my hash. And in order to do that, you basically just have to give the hash a name. So I'm just gonna call this states and I'm gonna set it equal to an open and closed curly bracket, just like that. And a lot of times when people are making hashes, they'll end up putting a new line here. So inside of here, we can specify a bunch of different key value pairs, okay? So what I want, I want the keys to be the actual state names, and I want the values to be the abbreviations for those states. So basically all we have to do is just type out a key and then we can type out a value. So the first thing I'm gonna do is type a key. So why don't we map like Pennsylvania. And so Pennsylvania is gonna be the key. And now I can map this to a value. So I can just say equals and then a greater than sign. And over here I can type in a value. So I'm just gonna type PA, okay? So essentially what I'm doing is I'm defining the key and I'm defining the value. Now I'm gonna type a comma and I can go and define another key value pair. So why don't we do New York? I'm gonna say New York, and we're gonna map this to NY. And why don't we do another one? Oregon is another state, and we'll map this to OR. So in here, I basically have three different states, and I'm not gonna do all 50 states, but I have a key, and then I have a value. Now here's one thing you need to know about these hashes is you can only have unique keys. So for example, I couldn't create another key down here called Pennsylvania. That's gonna be a big no-no when we're creating hashes. You always wanna have unique keys. All right, so now that we have these input into here, we can actually start using this hash. So down here, if I wanted, I could just print this out. So I could come down here and say puts, and it's just called states, so we could put this. And when I print this out, you'll notice that we're printing out this little structure. It's just like Pennsylvania, and that gets mapped to PA, New York gets mapped to NY, et cetera. But one of the most powerful things we can do with these hashes is we can actually give it a key and it'll tell us the corresponding value. So I could come in here and inside of these square brackets, I can just input a key. So I can input like Oregon. And now this is gonna print out the value for Oregon. So it's gonna print out OR. I could put inside here, New York, and now this is gonna print out NY because it maps to New York. So that's like a super useful way that we can store our data. We could give this structure a key and it would spit out the corresponding value. There's also a couple other ways that we can create these keys. So for example, instead of putting Pennsylvania inside of quotation marks, I could also just put a colon here and now this is gonna be the same thing. So down here I could specify like Pennsylvania and actually this should be capital. 
and now it'll still give me that same value. So it'll, it'll still give me PA up here. You can also use, in addition to like strings, we could also use numbers. So down here I could say one, and if I put one down here, now we're basically gonna get the same thing. So this should still print out PA, and you can see that it does over there. So these hashes are extremely useful, and there's a lot of situations where you're gonna wanna map keys to values. So for example, in this situation, we're mapping a key, which is the state name, to a value, which is the state abbreviation. But you could do the same thing for like days of the week. Or you could do it for month abbreviations. You could do it for, I mean, really, there's tons of situations where this type of structure is gonna come in handy. And now I just wanna point out how these are different from arrays. So normally when I create an array, I'm just creating like a list of individual values, right? But when I create a hash, I'm creating a list of key value pairs. And I can give this hash a specific key and it'll spit out the corresponding value. So this is a very useful data structure. This is definitely something you're gonna wanna play around with and get used to using. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.